Hello and welcome to The Arise interview where we take time to reflect on the big stories from the news and on the fortunes and affairs of the world in an hour of conversation with commentators, analysts and thought leaders. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, a new study has found that nearly all of the world's COVID-19 deaths are happening in countries with high rates of obesity. The research by the World Obesity Federation says that almost 90% of the 2.5 million deaths have been in countries where more than half of the population are overweight, with South Africa leading the pack on the continent. We'll speak to the Director of Science and Programs at the World Obesity Federation in a moment. And later, one of Nigeria's youngest and most promising gymnasts prepares to take the world by storm. Stephanie Ogechuku Onusiri Uka is just 10 and already she's won gold at the African Gymnastics Championship. And now she's set herself the task of being one of the best in the world with the ultimate dream of competing at the Olympics and bringing home yet another medal. So what sort of talent, determination and strength of character does it take to be at the top of your game at the age of just 10? We'll speak to Stephanie, Nigeria's 10-year-old all-star gymnast, coming up. Now let's start with the latest development with COVID-19 and a new report which concludes that the countries with the highest fatality rates linked to the virus, such as the US, the UK and Belgium, have significant obesity levels where an excess of 50% of the adult population are overweight. The World Obesity Federation's report says up to 90% of the 2.5 million global deaths from coronavirus have been in countries where there are high levels of overweight people. It says that those who are overweight should therefore be prioritized for vaccines due to the combined health risk that obesity poses alongside the COVID-19 pandemic. The World Health Organization says such findings are a wake-up call for governments to tackle obesity and the negative impact it has on people's health. Well, in a moment, we'll find out more about why obesity is such a threat. But first, this week, the World Obesity Federation is marking World Obesity Day 2021, and they've put together this animation video to illustrate the point. And an animation video there from the World Obesity Federation, which says it all, really. To find out more about why obesity is such a threat, especially during the pandemic, let's speak now to the Director of Science and Programs at the World Obesity Federation, Dr. Olivia Cavalcanti. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, talk to us, first of all, about the biology of obesity and how that can worsen COVID-19. Yeah, first of all, thank you for having me. Well, the, the biology of obesity includes a series of complications, such as uh, an impaired immunity, chronic inflammation, and the blood that it's prone to clot. 
And we know that all of those things can worsen COVID-19. And to be honest here, it's not exactly or shouldn't be exactly surprising that obesity worsens um, the complications from COVID-19 because we've seen this happen with other respiratory diseases. You know, we've seen during the age one and one, um, you know, problem, we see this with influenza every year. People with obesity are just more vulnerable to complications from respiratory diseases. Uh, and of course, obesity is associated with other diseases, uh, which are also risk factors for severe COVID, such as sort of heart disease, diabetes, and, and those sorts of diseases, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And, and that's the thing with obesity. It's both, uh, it's both um, a risk factor and a disease. So it really... It, there's no way of avoiding it because it can um, it can lead to diabetes, it can lead to cardiovascular disease, it can lead to metabolic syndrome, and all those things are also linked to worsened um, COVID-19 complications. And BMI in itself is also a risk factor. So it it really the association between the two is just really strong. And what we've seen with our report and what the research has been showing for the last year is that really BMI and age are the most serious and important predictors to uh, complications of COVID and mortality. Because I mean, my next question to you was going to be what age group is most susceptible to this? I mean, I'm wondering if this is regardless of age or whether older people are more susceptible because they're both old and obese or whether the young can also be very susceptible if they are obese. So BMI is an independent factor that contributes to complications and mortality. So regardless of age and what we've been seeing, you know, it's hard because the research in COVID has been obviously very rushed. You know, we're researching at the same time that it is happening. So at the beginning, we thought it's just about the older population. So we didn't really uh, understand what are the links between obesity and the disease and COVID. But what, what we've been seeing is that young people, the overwhelming majority of young people that are hospitalized because of coronavirus also have a very high BMI. So it is a factor regardless of age and it's just easier to see among young people because then you're excluding the age factor. And I was reading somewhere, um, and I just want you to sort of confirm this, that presumably the lockdown must be leading to fears that obesity could worsen during the pandemic because, you know, people are likely to eat more in such circumstances. There's definitely a fear here. It's not, and for several factors, so we are all in different ways, but we're all locked at home. Uh, and that in itself is uh, a very stressful situation. And we know that stress um, can increase our cortisol, which is our stress hormone that then can lead to weight gain. So that's one factor. We're also maybe more prone to buying food um, with uh, just longer shelf life because we don't want to be just buying produce and fresh food that we have to go out to buy it again and again. We know that this kind of food is usually more processed, so it also doesn't help. In many places, even exercise has been prohibited. So it's harder for people to do any kind of physical activity. Sleep has been impaired, you know, and we know that a, a good sleep routine is important um, not to gain any weight. And just the very, the, the stressful situation that we're all living. And let's also talk about the people that already have obesity and are now afraid, they're scared because they know that they're more vulnerable. We know that people with obesity also tend to seek less medical care because they're afraid of the stigma. There's so much of a narrative out there that people with obesity are just lazy and what's happening to them is their own fault that they tend not to seek help from a healthcare practitioner. So, there's so much here and so many factors that are not helping people who already have obesity and also the rest of the population that can potentially gain weight. Well, absolutely. So in, in your study, um, which countries did you actually find were highest in terms of those 
where there's a high rate of obesity that's translated into a higher percentage of people dying from COVID complications? Well, the, the United Kingdom and the United States are uh, definitely leading the pack. Uh, we know that the United States has one of the highest um, overweight and obesity rates around the world. The UK has also a very high rate of obesity prevalence, and we're seeing this is translating into very high rates of mortality. Obviously, again, this is a complex uh, situation we're living, so there are other factors at play, politics, vaccination rollout, etc. But if we're looking, if we're really looking at being MI rates and mortality rates, those two countries, Mexico as well, Belgium, are really high um, up there. And we're seeing the opposite, right? So we're seeing some countries that have very low rates of obesity, um, like Japan or uh, Vietnam, having low rates of mortality. The one thing, though, that I really like to highlight here is that although those countries, let's even pick one, Vietnam, has very low rates of obesity now, it is one of the countries with the highest increasing, the most rapid increasing rate of obesity. So that means that even if right now um, they're faring fairly well and not seeing so much of an impact, if we were to have another pandemic in a decade or so, which unfortunately I think we might, those countries would actually have a much uh, bigger impact and would suffer much more. That's a very interesting study there. I mean, I, I have to be honest, I, I've gone through some of it, um, the, the material that was sent through, absolutely really fascinating stuff. And in terms of Africa, um, South Africa leading the pack in terms of high death rates per population level. What about a country like Nigeria? Yeah, so South Africa has pretty high levels of mortality. I think we're around uh, 50 deaths per 100,000 um, people. So not as high as the US or the UK, but um, pretty high for the continent. But it also has almost 30% of its population with obesity. Whereas Nigeria, on the other hand, although we are seeing an increasing rate of obesity and overweight in the country, it's still below 9% for people with obesity. And that might also explain the very low um, mortality rate that, it's, that it sees now with COVID. That's, that's interesting. But, but of course, Nigeria has also pretty high rates of diabetes and uh, things like kidney problems and so on. I wonder what the correlation is or, or what you sort of made of that. We've got about a minute before we take a break. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, it's hard to identify all the different factors. So right now we do see some outliers um, in our study. Um, again, I don't know if I would call Nigeria an outlier because compared to other countries, the BMI, yes, the, the prevalence is high, but not that high at all. So especially if you compare to US, UK, if you think that the percentage of obesity worldwide is 13%. If Nigeria is at 8, 9, it's actually even lower than the average. So we still have more studies to do. But um, right now, again, the correlation is pretty strong. Okay, well, stay with us, Dr. Caval Kanti. We'll want to talk with you for a few more minutes. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat about a new study which suggests that nearly all of the world's COVID-19 deaths are happening in countries with high rates of obesity. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now, you may already know that obesity brings some really serious health complications. And now, with the COVID-19 pandemic upon us, it's getting even more complicated. A new study has found that countries with higher rates of obesity are seeing more deaths from coronavirus than people in other regions of the world with less obesity. Well, my first guest today, Dr. Olivia Cavalcanti from the World Obesity Federation, has been telling us why overweight people may be more at risk. The Federation study has also shown that political inaction on obesity is also economically costly, explaining that the long-term goals of dealing with chronic diseases like obesity are so far into the future that people tend not to take action or understand the urgency. Fascinating study. I'm the Director of Science and Programs at the World Obesity Federation. Dr. Olivia, uh, Olivia Cavalcanti is still with me from the UK. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. And it's interesting that looking at your list, I've got it in front of me here, India has a very large population, but its death rate per 100,000 population is 11.56, so not incredibly low, but still much lower than in countries where you would see very high prevalence rates of obesity. Yes, but in India, yes, it's an incredibly large population, but the obesity prevalence is, is pretty low still. Uh, it's around 4%. Even the overweight population in India, I think it's around uh, 20% of the population. So not that high at all. And again, I just like to reiterate the fact that those countries that were mentioning that don't have a very large population with obesity now, um, that doesn't mean that they are safe for you know years and years to come. All we're seeing in all of those countries are rapid increase in obesity, in diabetes, and in overweight. So I think the, the wake up call here is to say, yes, yeah, we're seeing devastating effects in some countries, as we talked about, you know, the US, the UK even South Africa, but there is still time to make sure that when the next pandemic hits, we're not fined in that same situation. And then that's also not to talk about just the problems of obesity, obesity in itself. You know, even without a pandemic, obesity is a serious disease. So we need to take, we need to take care of those people. And we need to pay more attention to obesity. That's a very good point. Uh, but just uh, staying with this current pandemic and with this latest uh, study that you've put out, uh, as a result of your findings, um, the results which shows that those that are obese are more likely to die as a result of contracting COVID-19, you are now advocating that in countries where the vaccine is being rolled out, that those who are obese should also be in line to get the COVID vaccine earlier, regardless of age. Is that right? Yeah, so this is already happening in some countries. Um, here in the UK, for example, people with a BMI over 40 are already on the priority list. Uh, what we're calling for is just a scientific approach. So if we look at the data and all the evidence, we know that the two main factors that predict complications from COVID and mortality are age and BMI. So the same way that age is being used as a predictor for priority in, in vaccination lists, we just advocate uh, for BMI to be the same. It's just a very scientific approach. So basically, um, there are a range of significant chronic diseases that do put individuals at higher risk. And your contention, based on your study, is that certainly obesity is one of those, but also heart disease and diabetes. And you're also saying that obesity is actually ahead of those, which ought to put them in a higher priority category for receiving vaccines. Well, BMI is, has the strongest correlation. And as we were saying before, the complexity here is that obesity is both a disease and a risk factor. So people with obesity have the disease of obesity, but they also are more vulnerable to diabetes, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease, and even certain cancers. So again, it's it's that perfect storm. And, and that makes it just easier for people to put 
uh, people with a higher BMI on the priority list for vaccinations. I was reading that you're calling on governments to adopt the ROOTS strategy for tackling obesity. I mean, what is it and what does it involve? It, it's really a framework for action. So ROOTS stands for um, recognizing obesity as a disease, ensuring obesity monitoring, obesity prevention, treatment for obesity, and a systems-based approach. And that is because being a multifactorial complex disease, we need to respond to it from different angles. So first of all, it needs to be clear that obesity is a disease. So again, the science is very clear here. We're not talking about people just being lazy or lacking willpower or discipline. This is a disease that has genetic components, interacts with the environment. It can um, be a result of trauma and a series of other factors. And if we are clear that this is a disease, then we also need to have data, right? We need to monitor it. If it's not uh, tracked, if it's not monitored, it doesn't exist. And once we have that, we need to prevent. So we have a, a big part of the population that are, is now at a healthy weight and we have children and we need to help those people to stay at a healthy weight and prevent obesity, but we also need to treat. And that's the T of roots those who have obesity at the moment and that is not only with lifestyle interventions but also if needed pharmacotherapy or surgery and support them and finally we need a systems-based approach meaning that it really needs to come from all fronts and and that leads back to the beautiful video that you showed uh, uh, at the beginning of this segment which is the theme of our World Obesity Day campaign this year everybody needs everybody it really needs to be a, a coordinated response from all fronts. You know, it, it, we just can't talk about personal responsibility alone. And that's why we strongly advocate for governments to adopt the ROOTS framework. Well, it, it sounds very interesting and it sounds very practical and, and also obviously hugely important. Um, is there also an economic cost that's associated with not dealing with obesity. I mean, I, I apologize beforehand if you've already touched on that, but um, it would be worth um, getting into that for a short while. Yes, I mean, absolutely. We have the, med the direct medical cost of obesity is obviously extremely high uh, because it, it is a chronic disease. So it's not something that can be easily treated. It takes a long time and treatment is expensive. In this pandemic specifically, the IMF calculated that the economy lost around $28 trillion. Of dollars. And of those, $6 trillion of dollars are associated with some kind of economic loss because of overweight and obesity. So we're talking about medical costs, we're talking about productivity, we're talking about uh, missing work, everything. So the economic impact of obesity really is extremely high. And I think maybe now governments are starting to realize that and that might put obesity higher on their priority list um, in terms of you know, serious issues to tackle. But I mean, isn't this about a lifestyle change um, that is really up to individuals rather than sort of the governments hitting them with a big stick over the head? Well, first of all, we're not advocating for governments to um, hating anyone. I just want to be clear about that. Um, I think that the the really hard, the re the big barrier that we face as public health um, professionals is that the narrative around obesity has been for many years now and still is about this personal responsibility. It's your choice. You should just eat less and move more. But what the evidence shows, and that's very clear evidence is that it's a disease. So up to 70% of obesity is explained by genes, genetic alone. And then we have the interaction between our genes and our environment. So most of us now live in cities. We are surrounded by ultra processed food, meaning junk food, food that has been specifically okay. engineered to make us eat more. And so, no, it's not, it's not about us. It's okay. about everything that's also surrounding uh, us. I'm, I'm really sorry to interrupt you, Dr. Cavalcanti, sure. but uh, we're out of time. But I want to thank you exceedingly, the Director of Science and Programs at the World Obesity Federation. There.
You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead, including one of Nigeria's youngest and most promising gymnasts prepares to take the world by storm. She's just 10 and already she's won gold at the African Gymnastic Championships. Stay with us.